I'm Dr. Brett Osborne, board certified neurosurgeon, nutrition specialist, and featured BPI sports expert. So moving on, the last category I wanted to talk about is keto for endurance athletes. So there's been this idea that used to be endurance athletes would carb load for days and days and days, you know, try to maximize the amount of glute or glycogen that their body could store in order to perform as optimally as they could, right? But we know that our body can only hold so much glycogen, one, in our muscle and in our liver. And... I think that what we've seen over time here is people moving over saying, hey, if I can teach my body how to burn fat as a source of fuel, that that's a much better state to be in for endurance than relying on glucose. Now, I've read some some studies that say that even in an endurance situation, their body still needs a certain amount of glucose. So what's happening there? So let's say that I go do a triathlon and I'm in a fully ketogenic adapted state. So I'm burning fat as a source of fuel. So I go out there and I do this event. I bike, I run, I swim. Where does glucose come into play there? And, and how does that factor into getting into a catabolic state. Cause when I hear glucose, even in endurance, I'm saying, okay, well, if my body's trying to preferentially burn fat as an energy source, I don't have any glycogen as that secondary source or actually primary source. So that means that one, my body's going to break down potentially muscle as a source of fuel, unless I supplement it with some sort of aminos or protein, which should. so it's going to try to supplement my body through, you know, breaking down muscle. Or the other, obviously, is ketones. But ketones, how effective really are ketones in powering your body in an endurance event? Because I know that you can fuel your brain from it. Your your muscles can operate from ketones. But how effective is your body at creating enough ketones in your body to actually fuel your body? Not really, right? Uh, you know, using using ketones is using um, is essentially using body fat because the, the the breakdown product of of, uh, of fats, which ultimately get transported into the um, into the into the mitochondria is acetyl CoA, and acetyl CoA um, is uh, ketone is just two acetyl CoA molecules. So you're fine, you know, being fully ketogenic and and running marathons, and it's not going to be a problem at all, at so, all, it, it, at all, because that that is what ultimately you're you are relying on oxidative phosphorylation, the, and the end product of oxidative phosphorylation is these acetyl CoA molecules, which is a ketone is just two acetyl CoA molecules put together. So do you think is in that situation, so even if you're an endurance athlete, you're in a low carb state, you're using fat as a source of fuel, is there some sort of supplements that you should be taking to to offset some of the muscle breakdown? Well, it would be it would be this. Okay, there's there's no question about it. So um, a beta hydroxybutyrate uh, supplement, which, which again, these ketones, whether they're nutritionally derived or whether they're derived from exogenous sources are muscle sparing. Muscle sparing. So I would definitely um, uh, be using that. Um, and obviously what you want to be doing, and I tell patients because they say, well, I have a triathlon, what, what should I eat? Don't eat any carbohydrates, okay? I'm gonna tell you when to eat the carbohydrates. I want you eating fats the night before. Make sure you're, you are fully loaded on fats, okay? So you're getting your daily macros. Um, and then what you should be doing in the one time that you should be um, using um, your, I mean, it has to do with energy systems. So when you are at steady state, okay, you are burning fat. Acetyl-CoA molecules are being shuttled into the, mito, into the mitochondria, okay, and you're doing your usual dance here and you're making ATP. That's how it works, whether those are from ketones or whether th those are from uh, 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 free fatty acids, all right, um, it doesn't matter, okay, it's the same end product. The energy system involved when you are doing these types of endurance races is a, uh, you are re relying on oxidative phosphorylation. However, when you are doing your sprints, and this may be a Mr. Triathlon, so if you're sprinting on a bike for three minutes, and then you're stopping and you're slowing down to that steady state, and using that fat again, as opposed to being glycolytic when you're anaerobic, in other words, you're getting that burn when you're pedaling the bike and you're burning, what are you using for, what's your energy source? Glucose. This yep. is anaerobic glycolysis. But when you are steady state and when you are going and you're on your 60 mile, 61 mile, 62, 63, and you're just cruising along at your 30 or 35 miles an hour, what are you predominantly burning? Your legs right. aren't, you're burning fat. Okay, so you can supplement with, 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 with ketones. 
But during the times when you are going to be anaerobic, during the last 500 meters, during the last mile, yeah, and that's what I always tell my patients. Have this before, have this during, and then right before you are finishing that race or amidst when you say, all right, you know what, for the next six miles, I'm going to be going and I'm going to be anaerobic. What are you doing? You're squirting the gels into your mouth. Yep. Be smart, right? Yeah, you can get it from your muscle. Okay, here's the, here's the other thing that people always say. I don't understand. Uh, you know, I'm fully glycogen depleted and my muscles are burning. I mean, my muscles are flat. How is it that my muscles can burn? Why is that? Well, because you never are going to deplete, never are you going to deplete your muscle glycogen. You're not. You're you always can't. You, you can't. Okay. You're always going to have glycogen Some. stored correct, which is why people are on ketogenic diets. So you can't get a pump, but can you get a burn in your muscles? Yes or no? Of course, of course you can. Right? So people don't understand that. So but I would tell you that instead of doing that, right, get that fast surge of glucose into your muscles, okay, by just squeezing those gels into your mouth. Yeah.